is your CGE core model, which was created on your behalf by the GTAB database. You cannot edit this. You cannot change this. You can only read this. So this is only a readable file. And, and here comes the main difference between GTAB and GAMS. In GAMS, you can edit everything. Actually, you develop the model from the scratch. In GTAB, it's created, it's pre-created for you. It's easier, it's more straightforward. You can read across all of these. So now let's, for instance, assume that we would like to see how AMS, this technological variable, is defined inside the CGE model and how it is, it is um, presented inside the model. What are the variables, how it is presented, and so on. So let's click search, find, and then we AMS. By typing your variable name and click find, it will show you all the equations which define this variable, all the equation which has AMS in it. And definitely it will define also AMS. So let's start with from the beginning. Search forward from top. So what is AMS? AMS import augmenting technological change in region R. So it's a technological advancement which is related to imports of product I from region R import i from region r in region s so region s is a destination region r is the origin and i is the product so this is the definition of ms variable usually this is the same order so i is the product here is the exporter here is the importer so here is the origin here is the destination so this is ms this is the definition of the variable let's let's pick another variable and see if we can define it together. So let's assume that we are interested to know what is uh, ATS. Let's, let's look at DB safe, for instance, DB safe, distribution of savings, and see how it is defined inside the core model. Search, find DB safe. Here, DB safe, saving distribution parameter saving distribution parameter if we click further it will show you how the saving distribution parameter is calculated and we will get to this next time so the average distribution parameter shift contains all kind of national statistics and national expenditure and their distribution share so this is the private expenditure this is government expenditure and this is the reminder of both which is saving and this is multiplied by the DB safe, which is the parameter that maintains that post and pre the shock distribution remains the same. If we click further, we'll see the equation of the saving. So price of saving plus quantity of saving minus YR and so on. So this will navigate you through the core model for your desired variable. Now, this is one way to define the variables from the core model. Another way is to look into the shocks. And in the shocks, any variables that you select actually will directly show your name next to it. So a fall is the intermediate input mounting technological chain. If we choose another variable, let's say ATD. So this is a technology change shipping. So an advancement in the shipping technology to region S. Um, for instance, endowment slack, this is a slack variable in the endowment market clearing conditions. This is related to the market clearing condition um, and the equilibrium condition, which is the building foundation of the CGE model, slack variable. It can be shocked, but we're not interested to do this uh, for any way. We're interested more in, in, in real economy variables. DOO, industry output of commodity I in region or and so on. So there are two ways to define your list of exogenous variables that can be shocked either through view and looking into the main core of the model or picking shocks. Now let's restore where we stopped last time. Last time we intended to change the subsidy on exports. Change in subsidy on exports of I, of product I, from region R, which is the 
um, exporting region to S, the importing region. So R is the origin, S is the destination. And here, when we choose shock, we have a lot of options. We can actually choose which sector. So the subsidy on exports will apply on which sector. And this is the factor, this is the sector aggregation that we have um, selected last time. So we have light manufacturing, this is cars, this is uh, trans, trans, transportation, communication, I guess, trans communication, other services, grains, crops, and so on. Or we apply all of this to um, all tradable commodities. All tradable commodities. And here we have the opportunity to select the uh, origin region. So we will um, change subsidy on exports of I from R. So R is the origin region. So exports from what? From which country? Let's say from Uganda to which country? Assuming that Uganda and India entered the free trade agreement or any kind of trade agreement which lead to change on the subsidy on exports. Or for any reason, there is some kind of, of government collaboration going on between Uganda and India, and the governments have uh, decided to uh, change the subsidy on exports on this sense. So let's assume that we are interested in cars, and we're interested in cars exported from India to Philippines. So we will change the subsidy on exports, on cars, cars, vehicles, cars, and cars, parts coming from India to Philippines. And now we have three options, three options to define our shock. And, and by default, here is a shock here. This is shock price factor world uniform 10. This is the numerator shock, where we shock all the prices constantly um, by 10%. So we end up having all the, um, the numbers inside the, the, the SAM as quantity, not values. So we can clear this and we will do this anyway before we start, but let's look at the type of the shock. Now, as you see here, as we choose our elements, the origin country, the destination country, and the variable, we have some values here. We have these values here, as you see. Here is the initial value of the subsidy on exports. So the, the, the subsidy on exports of cars vehicle from India to Philippines is actually negative 11.39. So there is no subsidy on exports actually. It has a negative subsidy on export. The exports are actually expensive. And here is the final value rate. This is what, how this value of subsidy on exports will look like after we define the shock value. And here's something called the power shock. So let's have an example. Assume that we would like to remove all the subsidy on exports. We would like to completely remove all subsidy on exports of cars from India to Philippines. In this case, if we choose change rate, this is, this is synonymous to changing, the change percent. So we would like to complete removal of the subsidy on exports, then we will type negative 100. Negative 100%, meaning that it's completely removed. And you can see this here. So the initial value is negative 11.39. The final value becomes 0%. So it is now 0%. There is no at all subsidy on exports of cars from India to Philippines. Assume the other way around. We would like to increase it by 100%. In this case, we will type 100%. So simply we are doubling this. So the initial value is negative 11. We are increasing this by 100%. This is negative, so it will be entailed as a negative as well. So it will be doubled. So it's 11, it becomes 22%. And this power shock, I will explain it in a minute. 
So this is the change rate. So simply this is a change percent. For example, if the subsidy is 20%, if we would like to increase it or reduce it by 2%, you type negative two, it will become 18%. It is a simple, it's simple calculation. So it's 10%. If you choose to reduce the subsidy by 2%, it will become 8% and that's it. So here you specify the percentage change that you would like to apply on this particular variable. What is the power of a shock? The power of a shock it is the, the coding language where that software understands the value of the shock that you have entered. The value of the shock that you have entered. How is this is calculated? And if you, this actually it gets more, more uh, peculiar when you look here at this value. So what is this 0.257? I mean, we understood that. I mean, if we, let's get to the easy example. If we completely eliminate it, so it's the final value is 0% and the initial value is negative 11. So what is this value here? If we add this shock, what is this 12.86? 12.86, this is the power of the shock. This is the percentage of the power of the shock. So what is the power of the shock? The power of a shock, as I told you, it is the mathematical coding language of the program. How is this computed? You don't know, you don't need to compute it yourself. It is automatically calculated. All what you need to do is to care which shock and the value of the change that you would like to apply based on um, the plan policy, based on the government announcement, based on an external shock, whatever is happening, based on your analysis of real data, which shows an actual increase or decrease on the subsidy value over the time. So whatever the source of your information that will make you select the percentage change that you will apply, this is what you really need to care about. But anyway, so the power of the shock is so the initial value, the initial value here is negative 11%. Negative 11% is corresponds to if we uh, divide it by 100, so it will become negative 0.11. Okay, this is negative 0.11. We need to add one. So it will become uh, negative 0.11. So one. Minus 0.11, it will become 0.89. So it is negative 11. It's over because it's 11 percent. So we divide this first, the initial value. We divide this first by 100, and then we plus one, so it becomes 0.89. Now the target is zero percent. And when we multi when we add this by one, so zero plus one, it becomes one. And so the power of the shock is new one minus old over old times one hundred. This should